everyone, and welcome to the third Spear Center episode of the 2023 spring semester. I'm your host, Aikman Fang. And I'm Lamar Moody. Although the basketball season may be over, San Jose State's run has left much to talk about. Joining me in studio now is Matt Weiner to look back on the historical season and how the Spartans look to make a statement at this year's Discount Tire College Basketball Invitational. Welcome to our roundtable for San Jose State Basketball. With me is Matt Weiner. I'm Aiken Fang. Matt, what is your initial reaction to San Jose State's 25-point win over Southern Indiana? The drought is over. The albatross is removed around from SJSU's neck. God, this program has been a long, around a long time, a long time, I think, over or close to a century. That's the first postseason win. So yes, we, I mean, it is cool seeing the way Alvaro Cardenas stepped up in about 20 minutes, had a career high 22 points. So that was awesome. But then just the history that went into this, all of that, but there's still three more games to play. And we're doing this at what, 12.51 right now. SJSU plays Radford in the quarterfinals at 1.30. So that's kind of where my mind is at right now. It's like, okay, boom, on to the next. And that's how the guys are like, well, it wasn't the first win. We have four wins. That's what we came here for. And I love how you mentioned that this is the first time the Spartans have gotten a postseason win when it comes to basketball. And it's, it's been a long time coming. <laughs> we've, we've seen some terrible droughts over the last couple of years, especially um, with this now being our first win in six attempts. We've lost a couple of times in the NCAA tournament. We've lost in the NIT. We've lost mm -hmm. in the CBI. But we've finally been able to get that postseason win. All right. And it's kind of crazy seeing the history involved with actually accomplishing something like this. Like, one of my favorite inside jokes that uh, around the program is when Justin Allegri, our play-by-play -play guy, interviews Miles after it, every one of the games. He kind of goes like that to him, just kind of pats him on the shoulder, be like, hey, that's another first. But, man, this is a big one. But the history involved, I mean, not even just in like life history, US history, I mean, polio has come, now we have Corona, like just there is so much history involved in this. And then also if we, if San Jose State beats Radford, well that breaks the 1981 team for single season wins record of well, 22. Well, you mentioned Radford, for the audience, we are recording this on yeah, a exactly. Monday afternoon, right now it's 12.52 on Monday the 20th. Uh, what are your, what, do you think our chances are against Radford, considering they just played the day before? The game went to OT. <laughs> Two of their starters played more than 40 minutes. Both Daquan Smith and Brian Antoine played 41 minutes yeah. on Sunday, and now in less than 24 hours, they have to face the Spartans. Right, and that's definitely going to play a role into this. Like Omari Moore, he played 31. He averaged, uh, he was second in the Mountain West with 36 minutes played per game. Alvaro was top 10 minutes guy in the Mountain West. He, like I said, he only played 22. So we do have fresh legs, and where that really helps us is actually Ibrahima Diallo. So he's a huge reason. So one, he's the Mountain West blocks leader, and two, he's a huge reason why San Jose State is sixth or fifth nationwide in rebound margin. But he exited that game against Southern Indiana within the first couple minutes. Now, granted, it was nice to see that he had a block and a steal, really good defensive presence early on, but. Is he gonna play? We don't know. So it's gonna, that's the thing, is at least you have Diallo having another day to recover, rest, get what, whatever he needs to be done, whatever needs to be done to get him back on the floor. That's really, for my, in my opinion, the big advantage of that extra day. And that extra day is gonna be very useful, especially for a guy like Diallo, who's, the, who's our anchor on defense. Exactly. He pretty much is the linebacker or middle linebacker for the Spartans defense mm -hmm. yeah I mean he is just huge I mean what there's a reason why we have gone from 8 and 23 last year one conference win to now potentially 22 wins breaking the school original school season's single season record he was out for a long time last season and SJSU lost in all 13 games he didn't play in now you have new guys like Sage Tolbert and Robert Viola who came in uh, Tolbert via Temple uh, Robert Viola via Fresno State, so that's all going to play a role into this. But they all just come to they all just come together. It's just a, a trio of monsters. It's the three-headed rebounding monster and defensive uh, defensive monster as well. I have one more question for you, Matt. Mm -hmm. What were your biggest takeaways for guys for the supporting cast, like guys like 
Alvaro Cardenas or guys like Garrett Anderson that still have a couple more years of eligibility? Let's build. There's, I mean, what else is there to say? Um, Cardenas, he's a second year guy. Um, I don't think he has the COVID year, but then same thing with Anderson, he has five years. So where does this thing go? That's kind of the question. It's like, all right, great. Well, now we're already moving forward. But that's it for us here. We wish the Spartans good luck with the rest of the season. He's Matt Weiner, I'm Aiken Fang. Thank you for joining us. And now back to Lamar in the studio. Thank you, Matt. We'll make sure to keep an eye on San Jose State's performance at Daytona Beach. The world of sports is stacked with families that have some amazing athletic backgrounds and abilities. The Williams sisters, Bosa brothers, and the Kelsey family, just to name a few. Lamar Moody had the chance to sit down and talk with San Jose State's very own softball duo, the Norega sisters. The Noriega sisters have a love for softball like no other. Adriana and Amaya Noriega come from a family with a strong athletic background. All the girls in their family grew up playing softball and they grew up no different, as their older sisters, aunties, and uncles taught them the game of softball. My dad, my uncle, my brother, all of them coached me through my whole softball career. So I started at five years old, so they've been with me the whole way. And my sister actually stopped coaching me, uh, I think around 14 years. So um, it's been great. And then my brother, and they actually coached me through high school, so it's been a great experience of um, having them by my side. Uh, she definitely shaped me into the player that I am now. Mm -hmm. So her being part of me really helped me in the long run, mm -hmm. and she really pushed me to be the best I could be. Yeah. Adriana spent her first few years of college at Fresno State University, but then transferred home to play for the Spartans and to be with her little sister. My uncle recently passed away, so I was able to come home and spend some time with him before he passed. And um, just being here with family and able to live at home, is, it's a big blessing. So I like San Jose State because it's closer to home and I wanted to stay closer to home. Mm -hmm. And um, the environment um, in the softball program is really good, so mm -hmm. I really like San Jose State. Yeah. This season is only the second time the sisters have had the chance to play with each other. First time being in high school. Yeah, so we played together in high school, so mm -hmm. it's kind of similar to that. But I think uh, in college it's like bigger and it's like scarier, so I think it, it was nice to have my sister here. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. We were able to play my last year in high school, so she was a freshman and I was a senior. Back then, uh, I kind of was the, the person to like take control instead of being the older one on the team. And coming here, it's more competitive, and being on the same field with her, it's, it's been great so far. Adriana is a red shirt junior and Amaya is a true freshman. The Noriega sisters represent SJSU softball but also the city of San Jose as both were born and raised here. Separated by a three year age gap, they both love to compete and have become a strong duo offensively and defensively. For SJSU, Adriana has a 13 RBIs and a .339 batting average this season, which is second on the team. And Amaya has 24 hits on the season, which is also second on the team. The Noriega sisters share similar goals at SJSU when their collegiate career is over. Uh, it's definitely to graduate with a bachelor's degree. That's always been my goal and for my sister, so that's the main goal. And then hopefully get into coaching after. Thank you, Lamar. Adriana and Amaya Noriega are just a few of the many talented players on this year's softball team. Balancing academics and sports can often be hard for student athletes here at SJSU. Taking a moment to relax and play some video games might be just what the mind needs to take a break. The Spears' Andrew Hartley joined SJSU football players for a quick Madden session and some questions. Thank you guys. With the annual spring football game coming up just weeks away, we know the football team can play on the field. But can they play on the sticks? I think I'm going to win because I beat Malachi Miller and Malachi said he beat Trey Jenkins last year. So I'm Trey Jenkins and I'm going to win because I'm just better than Dom. Point blank period. Oh. Yeah. That allowed him to get bolder with his pass rush, won't it? Yeah, I'm going. Yeah. 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 I'm going. Oh. I'm going. Oh. 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 I'm going. 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 Oh. Oh. Touchdown. Might be number one. It should be number one. Oh, and now. Oh, thank God. 
get rid of it. He's taken down. They stay on the ground this time. Yo. It's Williams. And some room coming over. Yeah, we run the ball around here. Let's go. Oh. Ah. Here's Jackson. Steps away to his left. I thought I could. They go back to the ground with Dobbins. No! You didn't trip him? Oh, it's a tubby. Why is he so fast? It's a tubby. When you get on a guy, you just stay right there. And each guy has Somebody his own assignment. That allowed the rush to move the big boys into the end zone. We'll see if they can shake the rust off. Yeah, and that's a good question. Get out! They'll look to throw. He's arrowing off from Williams. How? Oh, my. 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 Imagine. Tash. Oh. Okay. Badgley able to knock this one through, and that will do it for this first half. They're going on fourth down. It's Jackson. Oh, they got it. Intercepted. Play action. It's gone. He's airing it out for oh, Williams. By Marcus Peters. <laughs> yeah, Jameson. Here in this third quarter. This is is he in? Yes. Here, maybe I get their timing back. Oh my god, you don't pick! Tracy! Alright. Oh. Tracy Walker and the Lions. This will be spotted just shy of midfield. A 59 yard attempt. Badgley. Oh! And they will make this. Yeah. Try to shake off the interception. No, I ran to me! Oh! 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 No! No! no. He's so to be so far ahead. I thought I could be so Oh, he oh, the ball back! Oh, he broke on that crazy. So here comes a very important kick now from Michael Badgley. Badgley able to punch oh, this one through. Yeah! Lamar sold it. <laughs> no, Lamar. No. I just want to let everyone else know on the team, if you're seeing this, that I'm the best player on the team. So I just want to put that out there. Thank you. Nah, Don was good. I folded. No one else helped Lamar. Uh, defense did their job. Offense got to do better. That's pretty much it. I will be back, though, and I will beat Dom. He's not the best on the team. And there we have it, guys. Just like they say, offense beats great defense. Let's send it back to you. Thank you, Andrew. I might have to join you guys for the next one. Up next is Isabella Dandoy with the recap of Spartan Tennis. Hello, my name is Isabella Dandoy, and I'll be bringing you this week's coverage on women's tennis. With the assistance of free tacos and roaring fans, the women's tennis team was able to celebrate St. Patrick's Day with an honorary 4-0 sweep. After winning against Santa Clara last week, the Spartans were looking to spark a winning streak. They came out victorious against St. Mary's due to their momentum-gaining doubles performance. Senior Rosalina Yuseva and junior Irina Maradian clinched the doubles point after a 7-6 tiebreaker win. Their match featured many fierce volleys that characterized their relationship on the court, making it a fun matchup to watch. This duo now boasts a 4-3 record together, and Maradian has amassed eight total doubles wins with four different partners. <laughs> junior Jovana Babich and senior Lara Marco Moss won in a 7-6 tiebreaker as well. During their fiery match, Marco Moss and Babich strongly disagreed with some of the referee's decisions. Nonetheless, this dub marks their second win together. In the beginning of singles, four players were up 3-0 in their first set.
Junior Carolina Milan had another efficient win under her belt, finishing first for the team. She now has a 7-5 singles record, mirroring Laura Marco Moss's record. Junior Raquel Vian Pereira played in Marco Moss's usual spot dominating and clinching the win for the team, 6-4-6-2. After three tough losses, she was able to overcome the dry spell with a dominant and important win. Maradian also competed boldly, leading the team in singles wins with an 11-4 record. Obtaining the doubles point early will be key for the Spartans in future matches, especially for their Mountain West matchups in late March. That'll be it for today. Thank you, and go Spartans! Thank you, Isabella. Let's hope SJSU can continue the solid streak of wins. Now we take it to Laverne Johnson with a recap of Spartan softball. San Jose State softball has found its groove, winning six out of its last seven games. Pitching has been the bright spot for the Spartans, with Mountain West Pitcher of the Week, redshirt senior Janessa Yelegi, throwing 11 strikeouts versus Nevada. Redshirt junior Adriana Noriega put the team on her back, getting two walk-off wins for the Spartans during this stretch. After a 2-1 series win over Nevada and a recent victory over the University of Pacific, San Jose State heads to New Mexico to continue Mountain West play. Thank you, Laverne. And that is a wrap for us here at Spear Center. Be sure to follow at the Spear SJSU for all things San Jose State sports related. For the Spear, I'm Aikman Fang. And I'm Lamar Moody. Thank you and go Spartans.